Okay, so shall we read together now? Verse 8 of 1 Kings 17, ready, read. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and in a little oil in a cross cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did, according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wa wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Thank you. Please be seated. Our memory verse is in Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. So I want you to open there, please. Proverbs chapter 3, verses six, 5 and 6. This is our memory verse. Let us commit these verses to memory, okay? Shall we recite the verse? Proverbs chapter 3, ready, go. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lend not unto thine own understanding. 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Again, shall we recite it again? Okay, ready, go. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lend not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Wonderful passage of scripture, worthy of committing them to our memory. The title of our lesson this morning, which is the second part we have started last uh, Sunday, uh, is uh, Trust in the Lord. This is the first opening or the opening statement of Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. Trust in the Lord. This is now the second in the series entitled Building Below the baseline. This series has 10 lessons and uh, Brother Philip Rizardo shared with us the first lesson which is a relationship with God. The second is trust in God. The third is repentance. The fourth is humility. Fifth lesson, a good conscience. Six, dying to self. Lesson seven, filled with the spirit. Lesson 8, spiritual discipline. 9, forgiveness. And 10, and the last, contentment. And these are the series of lessons that we are looking forward share, to share together in this series, Building Below the Baseline. Building Below the Baseline has a lot, is loaded with, with uh, wonderful uh, insights. Baseline is... Uh, when you are a building, that refers to the natural ground line. Below the natural ground line, when you build, is the foundation. We cannot see the foundation once the building is finished. But that is very, very important. Remember the, uh, the leaning uh, tower of Pisa in Italy? Oh, you remember that? Poor foundation. It was mud. 
So it was, I think, how many stories? Eight or nine, uh, equivalent to nine story high. So it leans because of poor foundation. Okay, I want you to see the uh, opening paragraph of the outline. Grab a copy of the outline if you do not have. Raise your hands, please. And somebody will give you a copy of the outline. Okay, so we have, I want us to read the opening paragraph. You will be blessed. Okay, together now, read. Everyone possesses trust. It is the object of our trust that makes the difference when it is put to test. It is at a time of trial that the source of our trust will be revealed. A faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. In this lesson, we discover how to develop a faith that can be trusted. The trust of Elijah and the widow in Zarephath were tested in different ways and both passed the test and experienced God's incredible provision. Okay, I want you to fill in the blanks as we go together the goals of this lesson. The goals of this lesson are, number one, identify areas in our lives where God is developing our trust in Him. So, the word there is developing. Okay, number two, understand that our trust is displayed by our obedience. We cannot display our trust unless we obey. Then number three, be able to apply specific promises from God to our areas of need. We have different areas of need and we can always claim a specific promise of God for that particular area of need. Okay? So, 1 Kings chapter 17 gives you and me an example of the people, a prophet and a widow. These people trusted God during one of the most difficult times in their lives. Can you imagine drought, no food? In this lesson, we learn from them how we can build trust in our lives. So in those days, the country of Israel had forgotten the ways of God. Ahab and Jezebel, the first couple, had no interest in God's laws, nor the consequence that would befall upon Israel by rejecting God's laws. So in response to the wickedness of Ahab and Jezebel, which was centered in idolatrous practices, God pronounced judgment upon the land of Israel through his prophet Elijah. So uh, we have three uh, points in this lesson, which two of which we have taken up already, the trust of Elijah, the test of the widow, and the triumph of faith. These are the three points in this lesson. So let us continue this morning, the second part, with uh, point number two, the test of the widow, which is, we are now in letter C, her reasoning. Let us uh, look at the reasoning of the widow when she was confronted by Elijah at the gate where she was gathering sticks, two sticks, to cook the last meal that she had with her son and then the face and facing uh, 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 starvation, okay? So, this widow had surely endured much through the drought. Katapusan na God. I can imagine as he would look at the uh, barrel where the flour was, uh, was stored, magagamay ba? Every now and then. And then there is no supply, no supply. And that day when it was the last handful of meal from the barrel that she could cook, and after that, no more hope where to uh, source out for food, Elijah arrived at the city. Okay? Very timely. So, uh, she told Elijah what she was about to do when Elijah was asking her uh, water. In verse number 12 of our text, the 17th chapter of the first of the book of First Kings, and she said, she told, uh, told Elijah, As the Lord thy God liveth, this widow, I would suppose that this was the first time she encountered the prophet. And the only thing that would give you an idea, give us an idea, how come that this widow 
knew that Elijah was a man of God. Because God revealed him to her. In what manner, we do not know. But God said, I have commanded a widow there. I have commanded a widow there. So the widow's response is, As the Lord thy God live it. Okay? I have not a cake. So you ask me, water, unya imong pakapinan o cake? Ganiha tubig ra man dato ya karon pakapinan nimo cake sa tinuod lang magsulti ko nimo magluto ko cake pero katapusan na lang ni After that mamatay na mi I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruse and behold I am gathering to sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and after that we die Okay Although this might have been an accurate reasoning for anybody without God, tinood mo niyang isulti. Yet, we know that this lacks substance as far as God's people are concerned. We know that this lacks substance as far as God's children is concerned. But we, cannot un what we can understand that. So analyzing her statement, her reasoning first was without faith. She was telling the truth, but it was without faith. Kaya siya, hindi ko manini, mamatay na mi. Okay? So, maybe she was uh, so... Of course, we understand that it was very stressful. Very stressful. Nagagamay ko ng pagkaon. O niya, wakay idea, go asang source. Hindi ko manani. Kaya mao masay, mao masay na experience sa uban. Mao masay na experience sa uban. Say, huna huna, may man tong ubang kayo naman sila, bana ako, wak man ko ibana. Kisay may mutabang na ako. Gamay pag gini ako, maybe 8 to 10 years old siguro ng iyang bata. No? So, so, her weariness uh, on a daily battle to keep herself and her son alive might have distracted her from trusting in the Lord. And we could understand that one. But even though she could not see, dili niya makita ba, what was going to happen, but we know that God was planning. There, he, she was a part of God's plan to magnify her, uh, himself in the life of the prophet and in the life of this widow and also to bless you and me. Because this, this was recorded and we have the record and we are going to be blessed. We are so blessed by this one. So, the blank there is trusting in the Lord. But even though she could not see, but still God has uh, prepared a provision for them during the, uh, during the uh, period of the drought. And that is wonderful. Not only that her reasoning was without faith, after this we die. Her reasoning was without vision. Of course, because she could not figure out. She could not figure out. Remember, this is a widow. Gentile. She was a Gentile. And uh, she could not benefit from the oracles of God as was given, were given to the Israelites. The Israelites were so privileged in Romans chapter, I think that is Romans Chapter 6, they are so privileged to be given the oracle, oracles of God. And this widow did not have that benefit. So, we can understand that, that she had no idea. So, her, her reasoning was without vision. And her current state of poverty had also robbed this widow from seeing life beyond the next meal. She could not see life beyond the next meal because to her, there was no more next meal and so what is life after this meal that's it if we are into that situation and we are not believers of god we would be thinking and we would be so stressed similarly as the widow uh, was so but even then though her reasoning was faulty it was natural of course 
What could be more natural than that? Katapusan na lang ni, ako ni lutoon, hiniguman ni, among kanon, then what na? Matay na me. Very natural. That was natural of course. And uh, if you and me would be subjected to similar tests, I think we would be reasoning similarly. We would be just talking similarly. Uh, sorry sir, uh, <clears throat> nangay kag tubig okay ra. Pero nangayo magpagkaon, oy. Cake. Katapusan na ni, niya, mamatay na mi. That was a very frank, candid uh, answer, but with truth. Natural, okay? So, and if we were, if we were to, so, to be uh, subjected to the same, the same uh, uh, circumstance, we would have reacted similarly as the women did, okay? And that's the reason why God commands us to trust in Him without leaning on our own understanding because if we lean on our own, own understanding, like the widow, there is no vision in the future. So understanding God's Word and not leaning to our own understanding will allow us to expand our thoughts and to, to be able to see the greater picture. And in a lot of cases in our lives, when we are into difficult situations, usually we see only the small picture in it. And we are attached to it, and then we are so disappointed and so frustrated. So, uh, we have this commandment, and it is so fitting. Uh, in fact, it is our memory verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge Him. Sometimes, we cannot acknowledge God in our ways because we will all, it will always be reflected by, our ways would always be reflected by the way we think who we are. Oh, ingon inig yun eh. Nga naman, ako man eh. Ako gun eh. And then you try to enumerate your experiences, your, your educational qualifications, etc., your financial capacity. Ako gun eh. Kaya na ako ni. That is why, in a lot of occasions, you and me would find ourselves in a place where we cannot acknowledge God. But the Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge Him. Because that is the secret to get His direction. And He shall direct thy paths. That is the secret. We can get the services of the most brilliant and the best director of life in all the history of mankind. We have best directors that produces film that would receive FAMAS award, on sapa mga award award yeah. Directors would be receiving a, a, a award of honor in a form of uh, trophies or on sapa na dihang ilahang kuan. Nga they are so proud, no? They are so proud. But, but the best director of life is available. To you and to me. And the secret is only to acknowledge Him. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge uh, all our ways. We have to acknowledge God because without Him, we can do nothing. And with Him, we can do the impossible. Okay? So we see clearly her reasoning and then that... Uh, uh, that brings us to the third point, the triumph of faith. The triumph of faith. First, look into the request from the prophet. Okay? The triumph of faith, and then letter A, the request from the prophet. There you are. Not only did Elijah request provision, but what is very interesting in his request was, or is, he made it first. Ako ba? Ako. Very self-centered request, right? How do you describe his request? Self-centered eh. And kitang mga Pilipino, nabi ng maikog taoy. Og naa pang og minyo banis Elijah pananglitan lag minyo ni ba nang iyang asawa gisiko na siya pataka di first first gyud ka di ka maingkog ana oh di ba 
That is our culture. Oh, very self daw as an indohana. That is uh, that is our culture. But remember, our culture is nothing in God's eyes. That is your culture. But our ways are not His ways. As far as the heavens are far above the earth, so are His thoughts above our thoughts. No? Layo, nagkita kayo yun. Okay. So, self-centered nga tao. That is our comment. Self-centered. But it cannot escape a comment like that from people like us. Grabe po si Elijah. Siya gi pa pauna gi siya, no? Ngin siya. Fear not. Verse number 13, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do do as thou hast said. But you you are telling me that that is the last hand hand meal the that that meal in a handful? Okay, okay. Good. And you are now gathering stick in order to cook it? Oh, good, good. But do what you have said. Give me first. No? Notice. Do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. No, no. Akong gianalize o mayo. Nga naman lang o, sige, di gumani mong cake, tipaki ko ha. You notice that? Magbuhat malaga kay kala. Hiwa o niya, nakay, nakay pangkater sa inyong bahay. Hiwa e ko ha. Hiwa e. Let us see self-centered kasi kanang katunga ako or something like that. Pero dili eh, pabuhaton yun niya, cake para niya. Eh? Did you notice that? Pabuhaton niya o cake para niya. No? But make me thereof a little cake first and bring it to me and after that make for thee. Okay. Duha ko na ka making, make make. So dili kay di pabuhat na tanan unya tipakan lang siya di human. No, no, no. Di gyud pabuhat ni jan separate. Dili ni kay self-centered lang. Ita self-centered ang Ginoo. Dili ay. Dili, dili. Okay, okay. So, buhati ko cake, inig mahuman kag buhat. Magbuhat kasi moha ayaw dili dili di ko gusto ana magbuhat kay di magbuhat ihatod diri nako pabuhaton siya ipahatod pagyon and then una pa ka magbuhat para imo sa imong anak wow grabe no ka demanding gud ining propitaha og 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 ang ato ang maturity sa atong pagkakristohanon ba Pagka-demanding sa dining klasehas, pastor, oy, I hope dili ko member of church na ang pastor sama ni ini. Mambing? <laughs> I hope dili ko member of church, brother brother Clarence. Ka, o, o, ang pastor ingon ni ini, ka-demanding. But that's it. Mama ito makita. What a lesson we can learn as members of this church. Okay? It's easily, if Elijah were here and he would display... He will suffer some criticisms from us, if not from all of us. I believe that. So, make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. Pagka demanding na lang yun, pirmiro ba na lang kita. But do you think Elijah did not also struggle? Do you think? If that was the instruction of God to Elijah, mo ingon to si Elijah, uy, disura, uy, ma- oh, karon pa bagi ni mo suffer ko ini og credibility crisis. I will suffer a credibility crisis. What can she say about about me? Makaingon siya, kabati ang kinaiya nako, uy. She wa he was struggling, I believe. If ikaw ko ni Elijah, ingnon kas gino, ingna pagsulti ang widow ha nga pauna kag buhat di ba magpanagana ka bradyo magpanagana ka oy imo kang buhaton imo tingaling imilo-milo no gamay ba parang na ba kay protektahan o sa imong protektahan ang imong kaugalingon imong prestige imo nga wala ikasulti nga dautan ng tao ni mo di ba that is natural man nato the struggle sa nas Elijah oy kay ako ina as yang dapit although like na imong tag culture but even then generally speaking Human as we are, Elijah was a human being like us. Daa magin ang pagpanuko ba? Pagpanagana? Masaway bang din siya? May ganit, guys. Apparently, sila randuha. 
Kaya hindi pa ito'y silingan nga chismosa. <laughs> Insa to abot ako kaila, karun pa kung anak na media. Uy, tak! Mamatay na gano'y. Ay, hindi pa taka, uy. Mau pa'y pag-encounter mo. Kakuang ko ng tawana. You see? But Elijah personally knew God and his ability to care for his servants' needs in a most unlikely ways. Maybe Elijah learned a lot when he enjoyed the Raven's delivery services. Ikaw ba'y tagaan o pagkaon gikan sa uwak? Di baka maka-learn o listen. Will you ask, may kadiin manigikan? That is natural. If Elijah would be asking, hain man siya ini pagkauna. Unya ang ihang kanamang bill, bill. You know that? Big. Is that the big of the bird? Songo. Pila man ka patay nga ilaga nga giaanaan niya. Una ko taga igana, ikaw ma'am pe. Di ka tiga ka ka ma'am pe. Panglingo-lingo siya. Ay ka dati idantuan. Sawa pa ko taga iyan ng food. Pila man ka bitin ni iyang giana. Elijah could have learned a lot of lessons also. So, mo na grabbing testing, di ba? And we see this is foundation because on the surface, we cannot see this unless we are going to study very deeply below the natural ground line. Then you will see the real test of faith. And then it blesses us. Amen? So, now, let us now look very closely and deeper, verse 13. Ngayon siya sa verse 13. Because it would lead us to see the importance of tithing. Tanawa. Ah, verse 7 nga. Tuwa na sa kas-tithing. Yes. Because tithing is a key to blessing, ma'am po. Di man ginato na siya ma-discounted. Ma uh, it is a key to blessing. Mga may formulas gino. And uh, although uh, in the States kuno, dili na sila mag-discuss na ini, Kay allergy ang mga members. Pero that is not our culture here. That is not our culture here. So, we see the importance of tithing, the blank this tithing. Again, let us look very closely. Verse 13, it says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go, do, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now, Okay? So we know that God does not need our tithes, you know? He does not need our tithes. Why would He? Literally, literally, He does not need our tithes. But why would He insist? Why would He command His people to give the tithe? It is very clear in Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10, He said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, so there is an appointed place to bring. The Bible says storehouse. This is a physical, literal building, as it is spoken, storehouse, physical, literal building. This is a storehouse in this modern age that we belong. Okay? Bring the tithes into the storehouse. The reason that there may be meat in mine house. Meat, there is food. That there may be food in my house. Why would God need food in His house when He, in the first place, does not need the food that we we know what what, what food is? Dili man mo yung food, kaning food nga ato ang gidefine on sani, because He has servants whose lives have been surrendered to Him, and dili siya gusto mauawan. He does not want to be embarrassed to get embarrassed. On, upon these servants who, has surrender, who have surrendered their lives to him by not feeding them. And he does not want to feed them unnaturally, like he feed to Elijah, unnaturally, but would rather want his people to feed them. Pero, kutihan man nyo, sige, pakanan na akong servants. Kaya mukat mana. Usahay magkakaugtarong, usahay abudante, kay knowing our our weaknesses, usahay magkakaugtarong, usahay abudante sad, usahay mga panos lang tungkol sa kadagan, wasad, 
Ningo nang ginaw, sige, sige, simplify na to. 10% na lang. Iset aside. Grabe naman sa Lord, oh, ako'y gahatag ni mong 90, siya aros ang kao. Kadao, puni mo. Okay? So, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open you. God knows our heart. God knows our insecurity. God knows our greediness and our covetousness. And to assure us, nga dili ta maalkansi, kami ta, o katsihan ako, ano Naghago ko o 10 hours, ang 1 hour na ako ihatag sa ginoo. That is, that is, in principle, that is it. Hindi ko nang ginoo, ah, sige, sige, ha? Ikaw, kuan magiging ka, kulit magiging ka, ang pagkatao ka, sigurista magiging ka, daw magiging ka, Tistingi ko no ko. O di ba na ko ablihan ang bintana sa langit? Mga! So that add to na ko ibubo ang panalangin nga wag yung kay ikasagang mo niya na. O asa namin mo na ibutang. Can you imagine that? Literally, giingon na na pag soltis gino. Iya matang handulon the way we think. In the arena of our thoughts, add to tanya handula dito para makasabota. At ito tanad ito niya i-handle. So, but, okay, so that is the reason. He does not need our tithe, but that is needed to sustain his servants. Okay. But the usual error we commit as we return the tithes to God is giving him some leftovers. Sobra raba. Un sakray masobra god, yan na sa ginoo. That is not the principle we learn from Elijah. First, in other words, our concern is God's man's first. God's servants first. Because they are worthy of double honor. Why? They have surrendered their lives to the Lord. They have surrendered their lives to the Lord. They are worthy of double honor. So, the blank there is leftovers. Not only that, he commands us not only to give him the tithes, but also the first fruits. Why? Because in these things, he is honored. Open with me, please, in Proverbs 3, verse number 9. Proverbs 3, verse number 9. Proverbs 3, verse number 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. Do you know what is substance? With thy wealth, with thy riches. Honor the Lord with thy wealth, with thy riches, and with the first fruits of thine increase. And this church is uh, thoroughly uh, uh, knowledgeable on this uh, subject matter because uh, once a year we have a specific uh, worship service on first fruits, and usually during uh, January, and uh, Pastor Ribaton would preach to us. So, with all the first fruits of thine increase and the result, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wines. Meaning, you will reap and you will harvest a tremendous harvest. If you are going to honor him with your wealth, with your riches, your wealth and your riches, that would include your profession. That is your wealth. Your positions, your riches. Your businesses could be your riches. You honor him. And he will further. If you are rich already, if you are rich already, he will further supply your lives with plenty. So, Elijah asked the widow to feed him first and boldly declared that God would provide for her and her son. And the result was history. Paul, to the believers in Philippi, was so blessed. And that is why in chapter 4, verse number 19, because he was so blessed, there was no other church that gave him, supplied his needs, but the believers in Philippi. And so he said, but my God shall supply all your need accordingly. 
It is not in accordance with what you think, but according to His riches in glory, but by Christ Jesus. Amen? So, the first is the triumph of faith. We have letter A, the request from the prophet, and letter B, the response of the widow. The response of the widow. The request, wonderful because it teaches us even in our tithing. The response of the widow. In an act of great trust and yet against human logic, the widow simply obeyed. If there were no divorce, as I've stated, more discouraged than mga divorce. Nabuang ka diha, nga nugod taon ka, nga muhatag. Okay? But, naingon si Elijah sa 13, Go and do what thou hast said. Have you noticed that? Go and do what thou hast said. In verse number 15, She went and did. Oh, <laughs> you see that? Go and do. Here, she went and did. Literally, obeying what Elijah said. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And colon, and she, and Elijah, he, and her house. Muna akong emphasize. Kaya kung makapanalanginan na good ang usa katao sa kapamilya, na magoy mo dogok. Kaning her house, apparently, sa diha nga last meal na lang, or na dwindle na ilang did, gibyaan na ni sila sa obang members of the house. But when the blessing of God came, doon ay return, doon ay exodus sa mga other members, so nitiwalag ba, ho, departed. One as Bible, but that is how I understand it. Kay her house naman. What happened? Did eat many days. And so, God brought deliverance. God brought deliverance. In Job chapter 36, verse 15, I want you to notice, in Job 36, verse 15, uh, it says, He, God, delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth their ears in oppression. He delivered the poor in his affliction. It is only God who can save us from the difficulties of hardships and hardships in life but he opened it their ears in oppression oh okay this is it there are times that you and me will experience being oppressed and praise god that uh, we experience right now but the Bible says, He will open the ears of the oppressed. Meaning, He will cause the oppressed to understand the oppression. So that by understanding the oppression, he or she will gain patience to be able to bear it. And as a result, he or she will glorify God. And chances are, chances are, the guy or the group that oppressed her or him will become his or the, his, her friend. Because love your enemies, man. You see? And it is only God who can give understanding to the oppressed. Okay? If you are oppressed, mamalikas ka. If you are oppressed, manunglo ka. If you are oppressed, you will think of how to vindicate yourself or how to retaliate if you are being oppressed. But when God gives you the understanding, because He said, He will open the, er the ears. It is the ears of understanding that is opened. Makasabot ka. Ah, maudi ay ninggingon ko niya kay. Ang iya din ginaw na pak, pak, pak. May ka. Muhatagog allowance kay anak magidang tao for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you are no longer vindictive because of the understanding that God gives you. Okay? So, it was at this crossroad where the widow triumphed of faith. Yeah? 
Although her barrel was nearly empty, she gave her last final scoop to God. And you know, I am impressed by, by how God would use people like widows in trying to convict your soul and my soul of godly principles. Kana lang sa Book of Romans, I am teaching that subject in the Bible College. Grabe, ang iyang, iyang giparalel ba ang widow ba? Ang widow do na pa ibanap, di gid siya libre, di gid siya free. She cannot ask or she cannot look for another husband. She will be guilty of adultery if she do, she does that. But when the husband dies, the widow is free. Yang ingos Paul, mausad ta. Ang ato ang pagka sinful, dili na to we cannot detach from the law. Kay we need the law to manage us because we cannot be without the law, we cannot be managed in our sinfulness. But now that we are, the new nature in us is freed from the law that cannot commit sin. So the law does not apply to that new nature. Anyone who is born of God does not commit sin in First John. Amen? So I want us to see also the poor widow with her two mites, how that God would, uh, would commend this one. In the Luke 21 verse number 3, and he said, Luke 21, 3, Of truth I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast in more than they all. Because they were observing people who were casting their, their offerings into the, into the uh, uh, box. Okay? And uh, Christ noticed the poor widow there. And he said, This poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have their, of their abundance cast unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury, of her poverty, had cast in all the living that she had. You know, in a lot of times, we don't respond like these two widows in our giving. Do we? In a lot of times, we don't respond that way. Especially this widow with the two mites. We don't respond. And the prevalent reason for that is, Insecurity. Insecure man ta. Diba? We are insecure. When we give, there is always that, you know, afterthought. No? So we cannot, in a lot of times, uh, behave the way these two widows that we, have, uh, we are studying right now uh, in, the, uh, in giving. So, and the reason we feel insecure so the first uh, sentence there is insecurity. And the reason we feel insecure is due to lack of faith. Kitang tanan. Lack of faith kita. Kay og, og dili ta lack of faith, I am the treasurer of this church. Uh, salamat sa inyong trust, sa inyong confidence you church. You have accepted me as treasurer of this church. Ug di pa ta lack of faith, daghan atong treasury. No? Lack of faith kita, insecure ta. So we often times would convince ourselves that our cause is greater than that of God's cause and that hinders us in our giving. You know, no matter how much you and me would desire to be like William Colgate, Induta ng William Colgate, no? 90%, gihatag 10% na lang gibili niya. Yes, that is why he is honored until now. You, ka, you buy toothpaste, you buy Colgate man. That is how we honor his name, William Colgate. 90% yung gihatag, 10% na habit. No matter how much we desire to be like William Colgate, if you and me are always overwhelmed by the magnitude of the need ba, imong i-magnify ang need, kinanglan magugunin, pak, pak, pak. we can never be like him. And that is our, one of our weaknesses, you know? So here it is. When we forget our need in lieu of God's cause, God remembers our cause and supplies our need. I repeat. When we forget our need in lieu of God's cause, His cause is that no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is, that's His cause. 
If we forget our need in lieu of God's cause, God remembers our cause and supplies our need. And that brings us to the last uh, point, sub-point, the resource supplied. Okay? The resource supplied. Okay, let us finish this in just a minute or two. The agony of starvation. There you are. Was lurking around the city, around the corner when Elijah arrived at the city. But because they trust upon God, what happened? God brought deliverance and protected them from the horrors of death. Horrible man ang kamatayon sa starvation. Horrible ka na. Because it could trigger a lot of the, uh, sicknesses in your body. Kung duwa na kay gikaon. Okay? Very horrible. God provided them unlimited food supply. Verse 16. First King 17. And the barrel of meal wasted not. It was not exhausted. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. Not become empty. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. You know, our resources may dwindle. Do na mga panahon, mapikigi kayo. And may bring fear into our hearts. Or may, a lot of times, we become fearful. You know, to God's economy, the best time we can give is when we give out of meager resources than when we give in the midst of abundance. Diba? So the former, giving in the midst of meager resources is indeed a test of faith. While the latter could be done even if without faith. If you have a lot of money and out of your abundance you give, you can give even without faith. But, lahi, ang wakneg yung ka, unyang muhatag pa ka. Because that is going to be where your faith is going to be tested. The bottom line paragraph says, Is your faith being tested? God's promises are always true and He is trustworthy. Through the example of a prophet and an obscure widow from an unlikely place, we learn that God honors faith. The storms of life will surely come. They will be different for each one of us, but they will always expose the foundation of our trust. Look at the back page of your outline. We have some ans questions and answers. You will be blessed. Dig into the scriptures because we have some biblical references in there. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the lesson that we learned from Elijah and the widow when they were their faith were tested. Thank you, Father, for this who have come. In, bless in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What is the word to remember? What? Resources. Hello. Say resources. Resources. Everybody here needs resources. Money resources. Food resources. Everything that we need comes from God. He is the source. If you are the Christian, you get that resources, those resources, by faith in prayer, trusting. Amen. God supplies the need. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Thank you for coming early. Raise your Bible up, please. Raise your Bible up. Raise it up. Brother Lito in the section. Brother T, are you here? Brother T. Brother T, right there. Brother uh, Flores, please. Brother Jomho, you're still here. Okay, Brad. Brother uh, Claretti, are you here? Brother Claretti, not here. Brother Boboy, Palihog Brad, Brother Miharis, Brother uh, Sim Sim, are you here, Sim Sim? Good. First time's here. Is there anybody first time? Wave your hand if you're first time. Wave your hand. One, two, two. First time, wave your hand. Wave your hand. Three, three, first time, wave your hand. Wave, four, five, six, seven. Thank you. Anybody else? Seven, first time? First time? First time, voila, seven. What about here, first time? First time here, first time. Wave your hand if you're first time. 
First time. Eight, nine, ten, three. Eleven, twelve, thirteen visits. How many visits? Three, nine, twelve, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty. 34 diba visits visits 34 3 36 39 40 50 61, 64, 65, 66, 66, 3, 60, 76, 78, 86, 96, 99, 101, 102, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 106, 109, 114, 114, 119, 129, 131, 134, 100. 44 154 Everybody standing Let's all stand please Look at the screen We're going to sing Everybody Look at the screen Don't sleep Sit properly Stand straight Look at the screen Right there Okay God bless you All hail the power of Jesus name Together let's sing all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate falls bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all ye chosen seed of Israel's race ye ransom from the fall hail him who saves you by his grace and Lord of all hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all let every kindred every tribe on this terrestrial ball majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all Oh that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all faith is the victory faith is the victory June please On the verse together, let's sing. In camp along the hills of life, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil in glowing skies against the foe in 
below Let all our strength be heard Faith is the victory We know that overcomes the world Faith is the victory Faith is the victory Oh, glorious victory That overcomes the world His banner over us His love, our sword, the word of God We tread the road, the saints above With shouts of triumph trod By faith they like a whirlwind's breath Swept on our every field the faith by which they conquer death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall begin. Before the angels he shall know His name confessed in hand Then onward from the hills of light Our hearts with love aflame Will vanquish all the hosts of night In Jesus' conquering name Faith is the victory Faith is the victory That overcomes the world. Amen. The Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. In the economy of the Christian life, our currency is faith. There is a kalibutan atong currency, peso, dollar, so pa, yen, so pa ng mga, mga currency na to. Pero sa langit, ang atong currency is faith. We are victorious if we live by faith. And we thank God for you having the faith to follow our Lord Jesus Christ coming here this morning and assembling in worship here at Bible Baptist. We would like to welcome our visitors this morning. And so members, as we call on the names of our visitors, let's give them a Bible Baptist welcome. So let's first of all welcome the visitors of Sister Mayette Galicia. We have here Sarah Pelaris, Pelaris, Pelaris and Ruel Pilaris. Both of them are from Surigao City. Where are they? Please raise your hand. There they are. Give them a big hand of welcome. Thank you. And now we also have the visitors of Brother Clarence. We have Giselle uh, Topico and Hannah Toledo. These are from uh, Dipolog and Pagadian City. And they are here, I believe, uh, studying. So uh, here in front, please raise your hand. Hannah and Giselle, give them a big hand of welcome. Thank you, Brother Clarence, for bringing them. And we have here the visitor of Sister Hope Cadayona, uh, Rodmilin Rodriguez from Talisay City. Where is Rodmilin? Rod, there you go. There's Rodmilin. Thank you, Rodmilin. Salamat si Pagari. The visitor of Maria, Mar Maria Bel Villegas, Jessilyn Romero from Agusan, Trento. Agusan, now living in Nivelle. Giselle, please raise your hand. Where are you? We would like to welcome you. There's Giselle. Thank you, Giselle. And then the visitors of Group 3 Bible College, Rochelle, Rochelle Cabo, Cabugnason from Banawa. Dirira 